Okay, so in the last video we talked about the new iPhone 14 schematic leaks and why the iPhone 14 Pro is way superior to the regular iPhone 14. In fact, this year we would have the biggest difference between the non-Pro and the Pro models. And in this video I want to cover 10 big iPhone 14 leaks that have just come out uh, since our last video. Number one, the always-on display has been revealed. <laughs> Um, so we heard about always-on functionality coming to the Pro models for a long time now. Uh, Russ Young was the first to report that uh, the iPhone 14 Pros will be dropping from a 10Hz refresh rate to a 1Hz refresh rate, essentially allowing Apple to add always-on functionality to the 14 Pro. Mark Gurman has reported on this too, that Apple will be adding always-on functionality uh, to the 14 Pro models. But for the first time ever, the always-on functionality has been revealed and demoed uh, in Xcode 14 Beta 4. Macro writer Steve Moser found that there's actually a functional always-on display mode uh, in the latest beta of Xcode. This is visible if you open up the iOS simulator um, and here's how it looks. So we have two images, the one on the left shows the always-on display whereas the one on the right shows the uh, lock screen turned on. So for the most part, the always-on display is just a dimmed version of the lock screen, as we were all expecting. Um, it seems like that whale widget uh, gets less detailed in the always-on mode. So it kind of resembles the way it works on the Apple Watch, where it keeps the same watch face and it simply just dims it and simplifies it. But okay, how could Apple be so careless? How could they have missed such a big unannounced feature being present in the latest Xcode beta. Well, Steve Moser also shared a video. Um, now, if you play back this video in real time, you won't notice anything weird happening. But the moment you slow it down, that is when you'll notice that before the iPhone wakes up, you have a different mode. A mode in which the widgets and the text are fully white, without a lot of detail. So this is indeed a separate display mode, which is this new always-on functionality. So this is likely the reason why Apple missed it, because it was something that was really, really hard to see, and I don't think it should have been present in uh, you know, this version of Xcode. Another Twitter user found the same thing in Xcode 14 Beta 4, so Steve was not the only one. In fact, 9to5Mac also found a few references in iOS 16 Beta uh, regarding sleep states for wallpapers. The sleep states essentially being a darker version and a unicolor version of uh, the wallpapers that you have. So you can take a look at these side-by-side -side clownfish wallpapers, and you can see how the orange uh, on the one on the right on the fish is actually gone and everything is uh, basically uh, it's, it's got this green tint to it but is there any way that this could also work on older iPhone models and technically yes it could easily work on an iPhone 13 Pro as that one has a 10 Hertz refresh rate low enough for this always on display to still be power efficient and if Apple really wanted to they could also enable it on even older iPhones with a 60 Hertz panel if you take a look at what Samsung did, the Galaxy S7, the S8, the S9, all of those had 60Hz refresh rates and also always-on functionality. In fact, a user got the always-on functionality to work on an iPhone X using iOS 16 beta. Now, this is likely a bug as it's, you know, it's not supposed to work on the iPhone X. And it also looks a bit odd, like you still have the camera and the flashlight icons, which you're not supposed to have in the always-on display. Maybe it was simply just an earlier version of it. Um, also, this reminded me, 9to5Mac reported a while ago that Apple has very likely tested the always-on functionality on older iPhone models too. Still, if you're hoping to get us working on older iPhone models, I wouldn't really get my hopes high because this is one of the key selling points of the iPhone 14 Pros, reason why Apple is very likely to keep it exclusive to the 14 Pros. Okay, the next leak comes from Maguire Wood, and we might just get the nightstand mode that we have on the Apple Watch on the iPhone 14 Pros. It's actually one of my favorite feature on the Apple Watch, and I use it every single night. Of course, you will have to have your iPhone charging, and uh, you also need to put it on a stand, a vertical stand, to be able to see the time, but I think it's an awesome feature. And Maguire Wood also reported that um, apparently the always-on display will be disabled by default, and that uh, to enable it, you will have to go into settings, and then display and brightness and then enable it from there. That's a bit strange for a brand new exclusive feature to be disabled by default. Usually when manufacturers do this is because the battery life um, actually takes a big hit. So I'm just hoping that this isn't the case for Apple, but from the looks of it, it might just be. And then we have some updates regarding the processor. So in the previous video, I was talking about more reports that 
the regular iPhone 14 would be using the A15 chip instead of the A16, which would be reserved for the Pro models. Now, I was saying that it is very likely that the A16 would be rebranded to the A16 Pro, and then the A15 inside the iPhone 14s would be branded A16, just for marketing purposes. So yeah, I wasn't really expecting to see any performance improvements uh, with the base iPhone 14 model. However, according to leaker Shrimp Apple Pro, that might not be the case, as he still believes the iPhone 14 to be faster than the iPhone 13 due to a new cellular modem, so that means faster 5G speeds, and also, this is a very interesting, a new internal design, amongst other things. A new internal design? Could this mean better cooling for the chip? Could this mean a vapor chamber? More about the iPhone 14 right after this. This video is sponsored by Blink an Amazon company who have recently sent over their Blink video doorbell for us to check out. At a brilliant price of £50 or £80 with the Sync Module 2, the Blink video doorbell is a great choice. It comes in either black or white to suit any location, and it is also very easy to install, since it is being powered by a battery, so there is no mains wiring required. When anyone presses on your doorbell, you'll get the notification straight to your phone and supported devices. You can then talk to them through your devices, even when you're not in. You've got a delivery that you want delivered to a neighbor, uh, you can now let the delivery person know no matter where you are. Check the Blink video doorbell out by using the link below. And now, back to the video. So the vapor chamber is the next big leak that I want to talk about. Initially, this was reported by Ming Chico back in 2021 that we would be seeing even better performance and even faster 5G speeds with the iPhone 14 Pros. This resembles uh, almost one-to-one -one, uh, what Shrimp Bubble Pro was saying. And then Maguire Wood also had something to say about this, that the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max have been scoring higher than the regular models uh, in benchmarks, but interesting enough, that is not because of the more powerful A16 chip rather than the A15, but because of better heat management. This to me definitely sounds like a vapor cooling chamber, or at least some sort of a, an improved cooling system. Most Android flagships use this already, so it's not really anything new, uh, and it can actually make a big difference. Now, Apple hasn't really used the vapor chamber up until now because they didn't really need to, their processors were very part efficient, and they didn't really produce much heat, but I feel like now, since Apple has reached a bottleneck in terms of the performance that they can achieve, they need to figure out new ways of improving that performance without necessarily changing the chips themselves. And then we also have a leak on the colors, also coming from Maguire Wood. So apparently the iPhone 14 will come in green, uh, so that's still the same as now, a new purple, which will be replacing the pink, uh, maybe similar to the iPhone 12's purple, then a blue, a black, maybe instead of midnight, a white, maybe instead of starlight, uh, and then a red, same as now. And then in terms of the 14 Pro, this will come in green, so that's staying, purple, which is apparently replacing the Sierra Blue, sadly, um, then silver, which is staying, gold, which is staying, and graphite, which is also staying. Now, I do believe that we are very likely going to see some variations of these colors that are not changing, so slightly different shades, and especially for the non-pro models, I think it would be awesome if Apple did release a true black and a true white. As right now, if you really want to get those pure colors, you have to go with the pro models. Speaking of the colors and the design, I also want to touch upon the titanium finish, which is something that I briefly covered in our last video, that Apple was exploring a titanium finish for the upcoming iPhones. In fact, they even had patents um, that showed ways of reducing fingerprints and smudges. But sadly, according to Maguire Wood, titanium will not be happening anymore with the iPhone 14 Pros. Apple did actually make some prototypes according to him, but he didn't really see any actual prototypes with a functioning board. And the reason for this uh, was apparently the fact that uh, it was just too hard to work with and titanium was simply not cost effective enough. For me, that would have been perfect. So, like, it's 45% lighter than stainless steel. Smudges and fingerprints would have been less visible according to the Apple patents. And of course, titanium is also more durable than stainless steel. So I think that would be the perfect finish on uh, the Pro models. Of course, that we could still see this on other devices. Uh, there's the titanium Apple Watch Pro, of course, which is coming. Uh, and then we might see a titanium MacBook Pro or MacBook sometime in the future. So Apple is still testing titanium. They haven't given up just yet. And then also according to Maguire Wood, we might get true reverse for the charging. So the MagSafe magnets are stronger now, which is a plus, but most importantly, the wireless charging coil will now have the ability to properly charge devices using reverse wireless charging, which is a bit of a weird phrasing because I don't know if you guys know, but you can still do that with the iPhone 13 Pros and the iPhone 13s. If you use Apple's Maxi battery, you can reverse wireless charge that. So I don't know how this is any better than that, 
but he was saying that at launch this will be disabled, sadly, but that it might be getting enabled in uh, iOS 16.5 later down the line. And then we also have faster charging from the current 20 watts wire charging to 30 watts according to Maguire Wood. Although we don't really have any reports uh, to say if this faster charging will actually be faster or simply just more powerful. Like Apple right now states 50% charge in 30 minutes, uh, but keep in mind that with these new models, the batteries are also bigger. So it doesn't necessarily mean that we would get like 20 minutes instead of 30 for 50%. There's also a couple of smaller changes that I want to touch upon, which were also reported by Maguire Wood. So apparently the front glass will be Gorilla Glass Victus. Uh, nothing new here. This has been used on other phones before, especially on Samsung phones. And it's supposed to offer better scratch resistance and also better drop resistance. So basically the best of both worlds. And the storage options are said to remain the same. So no more two terabyte option uh, like we've seen reported. And lastly, I want to touch upon the price. So we have an unverified rumor, which was found by uh, Mac Rumors. Uh, this was posted originally on a Korean blog, and it states that the iPhone 14, the base model, will have the same price as the iPhone 13 at $799. He did say that even though Apple is facing increased production costs and uh, some supply chain issues, Apple decided to keep the base price the same. This isn't that surprising, to be honest, considering that the iPhone 14 is remaining mostly unchanged from the iPhone 13. Uh, and if you want to know exactly in which ways the iPhone 14 is not changing and the iPhone 14 Pro is changing, and then once again, check out our iPhone 14 problems video right here. I'm Daniel, this means Enough Tech. Um, do check out our short channel for quick and fun tech content. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Enough Tech, signing out. Cheers.